Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm kind of really excited because this is the first video I am filming in my new room. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen the saga that was this wall. This is not wallpaper, I stenciled every single one of these and it's on the whole wall. So... And the reason I am... I apologize for the traffic noise because I live right beside a highway. And this is LA, so it just never stops. But the reason I wanted to do this video is because today I got in the mail these two beauties. And these are the Lunatic Cosmetics Contour Palettes Volume 1 and 2. And I've been eyeing this beauty for... I want to say a year or more, and I actually didn't know that they came out with Volume 2. And they just had a sale this past Memorial Day weekend where they did both palettes for $100. Now, the price is steep, but usually one of these costs about $75. So to get both of them for $100 is a really, really good deal. So yes, I purchased these with my own money. This is not a sponsored video. And I haven't tried them out yet. I haven't even swatched them yet. I wanted to do first impressions. Talk to you too. I wanted to do a first impressions on camera so that you can get all the goodness of my reactions. I don't I don't know what's gonna happen. And this is kind of going to be a get ready with me video. I'm getting ready to go to a party actually, and I don't have a look in mind yet. I'm just gonna kind of play around with these and see what I come up with. Yeah, let's get to it. I hate having to wait for like trucks and stuff go by. So to start off, my impression with the packaging is it's really compact considering it's a huge palette. It's not very thick, which is great. I'm definitely going to put these in my kit if I like the product, of course, but it's a great size to carry around in a kit. Second thing is that they list all the ingredients on the back, which you sometimes don't get with a few palettes, but this one has all the ingredients and all the colors and everything. Second off is that the packaging is gorgeous. Even if you don't like horror, I showed these to my mom and she was like, oh, they're so pretty. And believe me, she does not like gore or horror or anything like that, but it is just beautiful packaging. On their website, it says that their contour powders are developed differently to their eyeshadows. These are developed with silica in it, so they have a really, really smooth finish. Nonetheless, I'm still going to try to do a full face with these palettes. I'm going to use them as eyeshadow as well, or I'm going to try to anyway. You might be asking yourself why I've wanted this palette for God knows how long. And it's because they offer colors that I want to say 95% or more of other companies don't offer these colors as face and cheek and contour colors. So you will probably find these colors in other brands, but as eyeshadows. And that's what I often use as a contour color is an eyeshadow because brands always make contour colors really orange based. And that's not good for pale skin. It looks really, really fake, and it looks more like a bronzer than a contour. With these colors, they're completely cool toned. As you can see, they're very ashy browns, and so they are perfect for really, really pale skin. On the other hand, this palette also has warm tones, which works great for darker toned skin. So it's a great palette for a diverse range of skin colors. Now the volume two, the colors are much brighter and they're much more unconventional. Just looking at this now, and this color seems to have been swatched. Okay, so I don't want to say that my palette came used, but this color definitely has what appears to be like a finger swipe mark on it. You know when you get eyeshadow wet and the texture becomes different? It looks like that right here. I will definitely contact them about that. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Um, let me check the other palette to see if I see anything like that. No, this one seems to be good. Uh, another thing that I like about these palettes is that all the pans are removable, so you can change up the colors however you want, and you can refill them easily if you run out of one. But let's get to it, shall we? I have a party to go to, and I need to get ready. I am stalling. So I've done concealer, foundation, and powder, and I've lightly set it with a spray. So for contour, I'm gonna start with medium cool, and I might buff it out with this. I'm gonna, I don't know, test it out. And I'm going to use the Sigma 3D HD Kabuki brush. I'm testing out the Sigma brushes. I've never used them before. So I guess this is the first impression of the brushes too. 
Now I only lightly tap the brush in because I don't know how pigmented these are and I don't want to have just a dark stripe on my face. So I'm going very slowly. I'm just tapping my brush on and then, ooh, yeah, these are pretty pigmented, but I'm already liking this color. It seems to be blending out beautifully on the skin. This brush has a funny shape. Even though the edges are flat, it also blends out the color beautifully. Not hard to work with at all. I'm going to use that same color down my nose. Oh man, this brush is awesome for nose contour. Yes. I usually like to use smaller brushes for nose contour, but this one is kind of like the size of my nose, so I can just fit it here. And it's done. I'm also going to take that color and just run it a little bit around my temples. Now I'm going to be a little adventurous and I'm going to try out this color here, just right in the hollows of my cheeks. This is nice. I like this. Um, I know I said I was gonna use this. Should I try to use it? Maybe? Mm. Okay, let's, let's see what this looks like. I don't know. I'm kind of scared of using a pale gray. E no. I'd say this is good if you wear actual white foundation, but not when you're wearing normal foundation. Is that enough contour? I think it's enough contour. That is plenty of contour. Now I'm going to move on to blush, and I'm going to be using the NYX 24 brush for this. It's really, really fluffy, so I don't want to pack on a lot of product, but I'm going to grab this one here and place it right above my contour. The colors blend together super nicely. Now I'm going to use this one as well. Ooh, that was a lot. Um, and I barely touched it. Blend that out because that is a lot of blush. Oh god, what have I done? Uh, oh, this looks cute. Should we try to go with a matte highlighter today? I think we should. I'm gonna go with this really pale yellow. I mean, I've got powder on, so I don't know if this will, whoa, okay. Huh. Oh yeah, and I'm using the Sigma 3D HD Precision Brush for this. That definitely brightened up things. I'm gonna apply some on my chin. This is looking really pale. I don't know if this, is looking ashy. I really hope to God it is not. You know what? Since I have this little precision brush and you can see it's just like the big fluffy brush, it's flat on both sides, I'm going to take a little bit of this color and run it right here. Ah, my nose itches so much. Ugh. Oh, that was way too much. So next, I guess, is the eyes and I'm going to be using this palette for it. Um, I like to do my eyebrows first. Ah, oh, my nose itches so much. <laughs> for my eyebrows, I think I'm gonna use these two colors. They seem to be the most blue tone colors. Oh my God, my nose. This is not fun. I will start with this color right here. I need a hand mirror for this. Don't you just love how I'm wearing like a super nice shirt with like, running shorts. Yeah, that's because I've spilt makeup on myself, my legs, one too many times. So I always wear some like shitty bottoms to do my makeup. <laughs> or none at all, but today I've got them. Let's get a little bit on there and um, yeah, let's go for it. Okay, so this seems to be more like an actual gray than a blue. It looks bluer in the packaging and this bottom one says it's called dark gray. Let me try it out a little bit, see if it's bluer. Oh, that's just legit a dark gray. I'll see what I think about these brows when they're done, I suppose. Also, I've gone back to shaving half my brows off and I've also been bleaching them, so I'm free to shape them however I like. Okay, now you can get kind of the full glory of it. I don't know how I feel about this highlight. Uh, how do I want to shape my brows today? See, sometimes I'm like, you know what, today I just want to look like a badass bitch, and then I do them like super arched and super like villainy. But I don't know how I feel today. Going in with the darker color for my ends. You know what, I'm gonna go badass bitch. Ooh. 
This part is honestly always so nerve-wracking. And I don't know if I want to do like a maroon eye look. That's kind of what I wanted to do because when I saw the Volume 2 palette, I fell in love with this color. And I was like, I just want to put that all over my eyes right now. I'm not going to talk a lot through this, otherwise I can't do my brows. I, when I'm doing my brows, I have to be just doing my brows. Like, I can't, I can't function. It's half decent. Listen, I'm going to be in a dark bar. And I'm a regular there. I know everyone who goes there, so I don't really care too much. Although, I am putting this on the internet, so I probably should care. You know what? These aren't blue at all. They are gray, but I am not hating it. What do you guys think? Let me know. If you hate my brows, just say it. Try not to cry. Also, I am aware that I have like a white stripe. I did that on purpose for when I'm doing my makeup. It serves kind of like a guideline. Eyebrows done. Now, finally, can we move on to eyes, please? Yes, and thanks. You know what, I'm going to do a maroon eye because, as I said, I really just want to use this color. I'm going to be using this color as my main shade, but I'm going to darken it with this and other, maybe, colors from this to blend it out. I don't know. We shall see! I do like using a shimmer on the inner corners, though, so I will be grabbing an eyeshadow palette to do that. Or should I just go all matte? I mean, okay, let's, let's do it. Let's go all matte since apparently that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to be using the Sigma Firm Shader Brush, the E57 brush, and I'm going to use this color here, which is the lightest color from the Volume 1 palette. It is called White. Is that actually, that's not actually white though. It's more like a bone color, but I'm going to put it in my inner corner. I like to highlight right there. Yeah, this one's crazy pigmented. Scrub me a little bit on my brush. See how that brightens up your eyes? Yeah, I always do this. Always, always, always. I'm just wiping this brush off and then I'm going to use the yellow right on my brow bone. This is a really dense brush. This is great for doing what I'm doing. I think I may have found a new favorite. Now with the NYX 16 brush, which is a super fluffy brush, I'm just going to take that pale yellow color and just lightly dust it on my eyelids just to set everything and use that as a base for the eyeshadow that is coming in. Or not eyeshadow, but you know what I mean. I'm worried that I'm gonna look ashy as f I don't know, on camera it's reading really, really ashy. Just so I can calm myself a little bit, I'm grabbing my powder brush and just lightly dusting off I think I'm going to go in with this color here. So I'm going in with the Sigma Firm Blender Brush, E44. Helicopters too, really? It's a really nice color. And I kind of applied it to my lid by accident. Ooh, this blends out really nicely. I haven't even gotten transition shade in here yet. Well, I mean the palest transition shade. That looks nice. I'm gonna run it under my bottom lash line as well. Okay, this shade is a very, um, how do I say this, like a fleshy tone pink, so it just kind of looks like I've got really red eyes right now, which is kind of strange, but also good to know if I want to do like a special effects kind of sickness look, and I need to make someone's eyes look red. This is the color to go to. Who would have thought? I'm going to use this color just to blend it out even further. Although these colors are blending beautifully. They're blending better than eyeshadows, to be perfectly honest. It probably has to do with the silica that's in them. I'm going to grab... Uh, I'm just... I know I'm gonna love this color. It, it, it just looks gorgeous. The camera doesn't even do it justice. I'm gonna use the same little brush I was using before, but I'm grabbing product just on the tip of the brush so that I can really concentrate it in my crease. It's almost as if the colors go on already blended. It's crazy. There's like minimal effort needed to blend out these colors. Oh, I was right. I love this color already. 
Christ. That's another thing. If you're into maroon and red eyeshadows, tell me your favorites in the comments below. I kind of want to use this color on my cheek now just to tie everything in together. Probably should have done that. Oh well. So while I'm blending, um, in other news, so the next few videos I've got planned, I want to do a My Favorite NYX Products video, which I have been promising since the dawn of mankind. And when I do that video, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I'm going to be doing two giveaways, actually. One on my YouTube channel and one on my Instagram. And they will both be with my favorite NYX products. So I'm looking forward to that. I've got a few videos planned, but as you probably know, I am also busy with the face awards and I'm also busy moving in, like my room still isn't set up and done. So, you know, I've got a lot going on, but I'm trying to keep busy, trying to dedicate myself to my work. So I'm gonna go in with this color called Deep Brown. I'm gonna take the Sigma pencil brush E30 and I'm going to take that close to my bottom lash line, close to my top lash line, and I'm going to connect that to the crease. I'm trying to be very precise with where I apply this. I never wear eyeliner, but I do this, and that kind of helps to bring out my lashes. I'm going to want to darken this eye a bit more, maybe throw some black in there. And a lot of times I don't put any eyeshadow on my lid itself. Which is sometimes, depending on the eye look, it just works to not have any shadow other than what you use to set, you know, the concealer on your eyelids. I'm liking this a lot, but I do want to darken it. Instead of going in with the black, I'm going to go in with one of these colors. I'm going to go with this, right where I applied the, the other one too, just really, really close to my lash line. Ooh, yes. Yes! Okay, now I'm getting the depth that I wanted. And it's nice mixing cool and warm tones because you can get a really good like depth to your colors by doing that. Ow! Ow! ow. Oh! Brush in my eye! Oh, that is not... that does not feel good. Oh yeah. See, this is the darkness that I was longing for. And this, if you were wondering, is my basic go-to look. This is the makeup I do on myself. Every single time I wear makeup, I just change up the colors. I tend to be very classic with my own personal style of makeup. People always assume that I do crazy wild makeup on myself, but I actually go pretty classic with my application. Ugh, I'm kind of in love, you guys. I like making my under eye really dark. Not really dark, but having a lot of shadow on it, I suppose. I love having like a thick shadow under my eyes. Um, I do think that the blush color is a bit off because of this color. I'm going to try to buff it out with my powder brush. Now I'm going to add a tiny, tiny bit of the color I used on my eye. So, ah! And this will hopefully tie things up a little bit color-wise. And then my blending color, this one, I'm going to use it right there. Just on the apples of the cheeks. That looks a bit better now. I don't know, I could be crazy. You guys might be thinking, oh, this bitch. I don't know, whatever, guys. I just want to get out of my house. It is 8.41 and I was supposed to already be on my way. <laughs> the party starts at 9. <laughs> this is as good as it's going to get. Now lashes and lips, I suppose. Um, I also always never wear, um, what am I trying to say, liner in my waterline. Um, I usually never do. I maybe should today. Uh, yeah, so for waterline, I'm going to be using the NYX Wonder Pencil in Light. I'm warming it up on the back of my hand, like this, and then using it. So if you ever have a pencil that is really like stiff and dry, like not too creamy, just do that. Just warm it up on the back of your hand before you try to apply it. This pencil is cool because it also comes in three shades, so if you have a deeper skin tone, they got you covered. Sweet! Boom! 
Up next, mascara. I'm going to be using my favorite mascara in the world, and that is the Tardis Mascara, the Lash Paint Mascara. Heavy coat on both bottom and top lashes. Just look at this mascara, you guys. This is ridiculous. Can I zoom in more? Okay, I've zoomed in as much as I can go. Just, ugh, this mascara is honestly everything that is right with the world. I usually don't wear lashes, I just put on this bad boy. And actually, I always wear a uh, waterproof mascara because my eyes are way too sensitive for normal mascara. You know the fallout that mascara has? That really irritates my eyes, especially when I'm wearing contacts. So I just stick to waterproof mascara because there is no fallout, or there's barely any fallout. So I might actually just do a coat of waterproof on top of this, just to make sure my eyes are irritation free throughout the night. Now I'm just going in with a coat of the Miss Manga mascara. Who makes this? Yes, L'Oreal. Just on my top lashes kind of lock it in. NYX actually makes a top coat for mascara that makes any mascara waterproof. And I'm just not using that right now because I don't know where mine is. But I know that I have like three of them because when I heard about that I was like, I need that. Huh. For my lips, I'm going to do something that I haven't done in a really, really long time. Usually I wear the NYX Liquid Suede's, uh, those are by far one of my favorite types of lipstick. But I've been missing using this, and I found this the other day while I was organizing. And it is the Essence Long Lasting Eye Pencil in Hot Cocoa, I believe? Yeah, Hot Chocolate. And it's an eye pencil, but it is the most gorgeous color for lips. And I haven't worn it in a really long time, so I'm gonna do that. And when I wear this, I really overline my lips. Because the darker the color, the more you can get away with it. This is just as tense, if not more tense, than doing eyebrows. I like to fill it in before I'm done, just so I can get a sense of what it's looking like, really. I know it's all wonky right now, but deal with it. And a good tip for overlining your lips, if you want them to be super rounded and full, draw from the edge upwards. That'll give you a nice curve. It's a different shape than if you started up here and went downwards. That's a more contained shape usually. So this way you get a really full rounded lip. So one thing I will do is clean up my lip using some concealer on a little concealer brush. I'm just using the Urban Decay Naked Skin concealer in light, and I'm just going to make all the lines look super sharp. You want to really blend out the concealer when you do this. You don't want to have a harsh line around your lips. You want to use barely any concealer for this so that it's easy to blend out. That's what I always tell people is like a must do if you're doing a dark lip, is cleaning it up with concealer. It just looks super precise and just like, bam, in your face. Hold on, let me, let me fix this a little bit. That is not fixing it. That is screwing it up altogether. Ugh, I hate myself sometimes. I'm going to put some eyelashes off camera. Um, I don't know why everyone just puts eyelashes off camera. You know what? I'm gonna do it on camera, you're gonna suffer with me. And I'm using my favorite lashes of all time, it's the Black Magic Lashes in Luminara. Luminara? I don't know, Luminara. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about duo glue. I don't really like latex-based glues. I think they're tricky to use. You have to like, wait for it to dry, get tacky, and blah blah I like usually the clear type of glue, where you just Put on the lashes, stick them on, and you're done. Which are your favorite glues? Let me know in the comments below. So, how's your day been? I never wear head accessories. I don't know how I feel about this. But my hair is getting really long to the point where I feel like I should wear something in my hair. So, I decided to go for it today. You know what? I'm just gonna... Sometimes I do this, I just... Press the lash up against my lash line while it's still wet, and then that just creates like a little strip of glue, and then the two surfaces that have glue on them just stick together a lot better once it's dry and stuff. 
I don't always do this, but I'm kind of impatient right now. And this takes off the excess glue that's on the lashes, so it dries faster. I think people just don't apply lashes on camera usually because it's super irritating and fidgety. Yeah, it's just not, it's not cute having to like poke and prod around your eyes. <sighs> Got crazy drag lashes now. I think that's it, you guys. I need to call an Uber and run out the door. So I guess final conclusion on these palettes. I really like them. The colors blend out beautifully on the skin. I think it's good for a really wide range of skin tones. I can't wait to use this on other people with deeper skin tones than mine. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have some fun with these bad boys. They are pricey, but I think it's worth it. There's a lot of product in the pan and it's really pigmented. So a little bit, like a little, little bit goes a really long way. Yeah, I am happy with my purchase. I'm glad I saw that they were having a sale. I have never used any of their other products. I've never used their eyeshadows or their lipsticks. If you have, let me know what you think about them in the comments below. Let me know if you like this type of video. If not, I'll stop doing it. Maybe I won't. So yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.